Not too long ago, I started doing watercolor. I haven't done it in about 40 years. And, and it was fun. You know, it, it was another new challenge for me. I start very similarly, you know, with a rough sketch, kind of mapping out my plan. This gives me time to think about a lot of things, where my lightest light is, my darkest dark, kind of arranging the shapes and the composition. So it gets me involved in the scene, actually, by doing a little bit of sketching before I even start. So watercolor, I actually do it probably in a way that's not the traditional way. I do it the same way I start with my oils. I start with my shadows first, finding the color and the value judgments and filling all the shadow families first and leaving the white of the paper for my light family. It's actually the opposite way that most traditional watercolorists work, but it works for me. So we can find our own way, and in doing so, we may find a unique style because we're not following, say, the normal pattern that everybody else does. So I'm enjoying doing the watercolor, for whether you're doing pastels, watercolor, acrylic, or oil paintings. So it's the thinking, the understanding of lights and shadows and values that will go to whatever medium you choose. Let's go on a tour throughout the painting and look at some of the things I did. Let's look at the shadow under the eave of the house. Not only did I use a strong value contrast, but more importantly, I use color contrast. It's not just violet and dark violet. It's a blue and a violet. Two different colors, actually, that come together. And when they come together, they create a more interesting contrast than value alone. Every painting, we must judge the extremes. I save my lightest light for the clouds. That's actually the white of the paper. And it's in a very nice area against the very dark, hard-edged architecture. White in shadow has to remain in shadow. Take a look at the windows. So the, the white part of the window frame stays in that shadow family. We could also look at the edges. Look at the hard edge of the roof line and the cast shadow is a little bit softer in quality. So we always want to be aware of the edge quality of these shapes. The marks and shapes on the water surface are not just haphazard. If you look back at my original drawing, you know, I was thinking about where I was placing the highlights. How can I make some shapes thicker, some thinner, to help give a sense of perspective, to get us to feel that the surface is flat and also help us get deeper into the picture? Often people think things always get cooler, bluer, and lighter as they go back in distance, but that's not always true. And if you're open to looking at nature, while I was painting this scene, the cloud patterns kept on changing. So when I saw them in a good position, an interesting shape, I grabbed onto them. And it, you know, soon they were gone. But so I grab onto things when I see them, and all of a sudden the light hit the little village that was further down upon the lake. And that was a really nice, bright, warm spot way in the distance. But because it's a smaller shape, compared to the large, big architectural warm shape on the right, it tells us, yes, it's back in the distance, and it also is a nice counterbalance to the big mass on the right. So a very small mark can counterbalance a very big, heavy shape in your composition. Look at the variety of color changes I have within the shadow shape. So as it moves through the shadow, we have temperature changes due to the rocks and the vegetation. And so you'll also see 
at the bottoms of some of the shapes, especially in the green area, areas that are facing the sky, it gets a little bit bluer on those edges where it meets the light shapes. The knowledge I'm sharing with you is the fundamentals of painting. Remember, again, it doesn't matter if we're painting in oils or watercolor, doing pastel. It's the knowledge of thinking and seeing that will help us create the painting. Once we understand the process, once we understand how to see on three dimensions and break it down to put on two dimensions, then we will learn the techniques necessary. I still struggle with the watercolor. I'm finding my way through it. But because I know how to see, I actually have a better chance at success than someone who is just using watercolor for the first time. 